In this video, we're going to discuss the differences and similarities between Chebyshev's theorem and the empirical rule. Okay, so let's start with the similarities. Both rules are used to determine the proportion of data that lies within some given interval. So that's useful to know. That means they're also easy to confuse on a test, right? You might think that you should be using the empirical rule when in fact you need to be using Chebyshev's rule. So we're going to talk about how to avoid that by looking at keywords. Another thing that makes them similar is that both of these rules help us to get an intuitive feel for standard deviation and its relationship to the mean. So I think it's hard to really cover standard deviation effectively without knowing these two rules. All right, let's start with Chebyshev's theorem, though. The important thing about Chebyshev's theorem is that it makes no assumptions about the shape of the distribution, right? It doesn't assume bell-shaped. It doesn't assume uniform shape. It makes no assumptions whatsoever. And going with that, then, is that it makes no assumptions about symmetry, right? Because if it doesn't assume anything about the shape of the distribution, then it doesn't assume anything about the distribution's symmetry, right? So we can't be sure that when we're dealing with a problem that involves Chebyshev's theorem, that half of the data lies above the mean and half of the data is below the mean. We can't make that assumption that isn't something that is necessarily true. However, when you're dealing with the empirical rule, we have a totally different situation. We do assume the data follows a specific distribution and that distribution is bell-shaped, right? And then because it's bell-shaped, we're going to assume that it's perfectly symmetric, meaning that indeed half the data does lie beneath the mean and half the data does lie above the mean. All right, for Chebyshev's theorem, the theorem can only give us a lower bound for the proportion of data inside an interval, right? And that interval also has to be symmetric about the mean. In other words, it has to have equal space above the mean and equal space below the mean, right? Chebyshev's theorem is very versatile since it can be used for any data distribution. So, of course, since it's so powerful in that respect, you'd expect that there'd be some trade-off. And the trade-off, of course, is that it cannot give us approximate or precise answers. It only gives us a lower bound for the amount of data that's inside an interval. And also, it's important that that interval is symmetric about the mean. We also have limitations on the number of standard deviations that we're going to use to form that interval, but the limitations are minimal. The only rule we really have to follow there is that the number of standard deviations should be greater than one because if you use one, it gives you useless information and anything less than one doesn't work for. So the essential idea with Chebyshev's theorem is it's very versatile, but it only gives you a lower bound or sort of a minimum percentage of data that belongs to the interval. With the empirical rule, we get more precise answers. We get approximate solutions, right? So we know the approximate amount of data within a given interval. And we also have more flexibility on the interval. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetric around the mean. However, there are limitations on the number of standard deviations that we can work with because it only uses integer standard deviations like one below, two below, three below, up to one above, two above, or three above the mean. So we have a, a limited number of cases that we can use empirical rule for, but we don't have to have a symmetric interval that's symmetric around the mean, so that's useful. But So the big things to remember, though, empirical rule assumes bell-shaped curves. Chebyshev's theorem makes no assumption whatsoever about that. And then the empirical rule gives us approximate answers. Chebyshev's theorem gives us lower bounds or minimum amounts of data that belong to given intervals. All right, and then how are these differences reflected in the keywords? Well. In Chebyshev's theorem, you're likely to see something about the minimum percentage of data between two given values, right? Or the maximum percentage of data above a value or below a value, right? Because remember, we can kind of work with the theorem to then produce answers that give us upper bounds, right? So again, essentially, they give us either lower bounds or upper bounds. The pure theorem, directly used as stated, gives us a minimum bound, right? So you're looking for phrases like at least, right? Or minimum, maximum, etc. Another thing you'll notice about Chebyshev's theorem is that a lot of times the problems will say directly, assume nothing is known about the shape of the distribution. They're trying to hint to you that you cannot assume a specific shape like a bell-shaped distribution. That's to help you avoid using the empirical rule when you're not supposed to. All right, so the empirical rule talks about approximately what percent of the data is between two given numbers, right? So it uses that phrase approximate, right? It doesn't talk about lower bounds because the rule doesn't give you a lower bound, it gives you approximate answers. So look for that phrase approximately, that's a good hint. And of course, both theorems will say something about what percent of data is between and give you two numbers. So that part is consistent in both rules, but the approximately is pretty much only used with empirical rule, and it would not be used in Chebyshev's theorem. 
And then finally, empirical rule problems are a dead giveaway because they talk about the fact that the data follows a certain shaped distribution, specifically a bell-shaped distribution or a normal probability distribution, or they'll talk about it being symmetric and mound-shaped. So the empirical rule will have that given to you. That's a good clue that you're dealing with a problem that you should use the empirical rule for.